Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today on the DCC Guy, I want to continue with uh, the discussion uh, that I started in the previous video on how to uh, set up a uh, USB interface for your power cab system so that you can use it uh, with Decoder Pro and JMRI programs on your model railroad. Um, what I'm going to do today then is move over to the uh, Windows computer and I'll show you how to uh, open up the uh, the zipped files that uh, that come from or that cut that the uh, drivers come in and then how to go ahead and install those drivers in Windows. Uh, I particularly have Windows 10 systems but you know it's probably going to be fairly similar for uh, Windows 7 and, and earlier versions. Um, also um, the, uh, the fellow that I, I, I mentioned uh, in my earlier video uh, who had had problems setting up um, the USB interface and, and the like um, I got back to me after he saw the video and he wanted me to point out that one of the real problems that he had was the Windows computer that he had purchased. And he had ordered this, uh, I believe, off of Amazon. And it was a, uh, a knockoff brand, apparently, that had hardly enough memory in it to even run the Windows operating system, much less Decoder Pro and anything else. So that was really the problems that he had. Uh, but right now, let's go ahead and switch over to the uh, switch over to the computer. Uh, but before we do get started, I want to thank you guys who have been, you know, subscribing to the site. Uh, we went over over 4,300 uh, subscribers uh, yesterday, and uh, so we're well over the 4,000 level, and we should be at 5,000 by the beginning of July. Right now, we're getting about 1,200 uh, new subscribers every month here, so it, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be a problem to hit 5,000 uh, by the beginning of July and be over 10,000 by uh, the end of the year. So, you know... Talk it up with your friends and, and the like, the members of your train club and that kind of thing. And, you know, tell them, subscribe to the DCC guy and uh, help me get it over 12, uh, 10,000 by the end of the year. Now, YouTube tells me that if you're watching this video, there's a greater than 60% chance that you haven't subscribed to the DCC guy channel. So take a few seconds, click on the subscribe button, and then click on this bell right next to it. When that comes up, select all, and then you'll receive a notification every time that I upload a new video to YouTube. Thanks a lot now. Enjoy the rest of the video. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and uh, move on over and get started with uh, installing the drivers. Okay, so here we are on my Windows 10 machine, and you can see uh, we have a zipped file. You can tell it's zipped because uh, of this zipper running across the directory uh, folder uh, here. So this is what you'll be downloading from uh, the uh, link on the NCE website. Okay, and um, you, you know when you go to the website that uh, they link to, you'll you'll be able to select whether or not you're using Windows 10 or 7 or whatever, and it downloads the appropriate files for you. So right now though they're in a zipped format, so you need to. Uh, get them into a, um, a, a format that you can use. So that's fairly easy. Just click on the uh, directory, and let me pull this down in here, and you can see that one option that you have is to extract all. And that's what we want to do. We want to unzip it and extract it. So I'm going to click it, and it's going to ask me if I want to put them here. So I'm going to put them right on my desktop in, uh, in the same type of folder, same name, and uh, we'll extract them. And there it's done. Now let me close the original one, and we got this one. So you can see here, there's a README text document here that you can take a look at. Uh, and then uh, there is a installer of 64. That is a 64-bit uh, installer. So that would be for a 64-bit uh, Windows machine. And the x86 version of the installer is for a 32-bit machine. So you need to know what you have, okay? I don't know what would happen if you installed a 32-bit driver uh, on a 64-bit machine. And it's probably going to give you some kind of an error, but um, I'm not going to waste time uh, you know, testing it out here. So uh, try to find out what you have and install the correct one. If you run into a problem and it says, you know, this is not correct, then just tell it to stop. 
a very straightforward thing to do uh, when you're installing these kind of things, but be aware of that. One thing we're going to need to do uh, as part of this uh, installation process is access a way of looking at the device driver. So what you want to do is go down here to your Windows menu icon, bring that up and scroll on down to Windows. And when we get there, look for Windows System. Click on that. And this one, the control panel. Click there. Now I'm going to bring this in. When the control panel comes up, okay, we want to move down to Hardware and Sound and click there. Okay. Then go up to Devices and Printers and click on the Device Manager. Okay. Now, let me bring that down in here and we'll get rid of this uh, clutter in the background. What we have then is go down to Ports. Okay. And you'll see we have two ports, uh, Bluetooth ports uh, 3 and 4, and that's all that's open. Now once we install the device driver for the USB interface, it's going to pop up here. So we're going to need this, so I just wanted to show you that. For right now, you can uh, uh, go ahead and hide that, uh, you know, move it down to the, uh, down to the uh, tray, and just let it sit there until we need it later on in the installation process. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Click there, and it'll be available when we need it. Okay, let's move on. At uh, this point now, then, we have the, uh, the uh, folder unzipped, and it's sitting here before us. And um, we can go ahead, and we have three options as far as installing a device driver. First, we can go ahead and click on whichever one of these uh, installers is appropriate, the 64-bit or the 32-bit installer. And we'll go ahead and do that in just a second. Uh, the second option is to plug in the USB uh, interface, let Windows discover it, and go ahead and begin the installation process uh, automatically for the device driver that it should have stored uh, on the hard disk. And you can go ahead and let that happen and just click through, and we'll, we'll go through that process in a second too. And then the third option is if the first two don't work, then one thing you can do is open up the device driver, and I'll show you how to get to that in a minute. And you can go ahead and do a, an upgrade for the drivers. And that basically allows you to go ahead and select the drivers that we've just downloaded and, uh, and begin the installation process that way. So there's three options for you and uh, I'll go through all three. So let's go ahead and begin with clicking on this one right here, the uh, installer for the 64-bit machines, which I'm pretty sure mine is. And let's see what happens. Um, okay, it's asking me, I don't know if you can see this on the screen here, but it's asking me if I want to uh, do it. And I'm going to say yes. So we want to drive, uh, we want to install it. Okay, let me bring it down in here. And it says, welcome to the device driver. Let's go ahead and click next. Um, and that was fast. And we're going to say finish. And you can see here now in the ports, we now have on COM11 this uh, USB driver. And that's the one we need in order to get this to work properly. Now, I said I was going to show you uh, the automatic installation approach. And uh, so let me go ahead and do that. Uh, I've tried this two or three times now, and it never works properly. It installs a different driver than the one we need, and it doesn't work. So uh, what I'm going to do is show you that, and then we'll skip on and do the update. Okay, I'm going to plug it in, and it did a little bit of a chime. Ah, okay, so it did a chime. And then this device, I don't know if you can actually see that little pop-up that came up, and it said that it was uh, working and uh, or that it had, been, had uploaded and installed the driver. So let me go ahead and uh, let's take a look uh, at the connections again. And you can see it's, it's put this other USB driver in here, but we have nothing down here in the COM ports, even though it's hooked up. And... Um, I'm going to go to this, and we'll click on the driver. Um, 
It says the drivers for this are not installed. There are no compatible drivers for the device. Uh, so what we're going to have to do is update the driver. So we're going to click on that. So that's what, you know, what I told you we would have to do. Because every time I've tried to install this thing, it doesn't work. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to browse the computer for the drivers. And these are the drivers that we you know, downloaded, unzipped, and left in the uh, folder on the desktop. So we're going to browse for them. And you can see it's still sitting here uh, from previous installations I've done, sitting on the desktop you know, where we left it. So I'm going to click on Next. And it's installing it. And it says it successfully uh, installed and updated the drivers. So let's close and close again. And you can see here now in the ports, we now have on COM11 this uh, USB driver. And that's the one we need in order to get this to work properly. So option two doesn't seem to work uh, as far as uh, I've been able to get it on my computer. That um, it, it, do it does not have the proper drivers stored in Windows, so it can't do the installation. So if you try that, that's what's going to happen. But, you know, at least we know that now. I suggest you do option one, or you can go ahead and run that update like I just showed you if you try this and it fails with your system. So let's go ahead now that we have the drivers uh, working and uh, the USB interface is, is operational. Let's go ahead and move on to setting up the connection to Decoder Pro and getting that ready for programming. Now I'm going to op, uh, start Decoder Pro. Um, now we're going to want, I'm going to start new. I've got PowerCab and TestCab, but I'm going to start a new one here. And we're going to call this uh, uh, PCAB USB. Okay, so that'll uh, give us a new profile. And you noticed here uh, on the desktop, when you open up Windows, uh, I have several different configuration profiles because I have a I have a, uh, a a USB connection for LocoNet. I have one for my PowerCab already. I have one for my Sprog system, and then I have this one that we can delete in a minute. That was the uh, uh, test version I did earlier, and we're going to have yet another one here that'll be a new one called the uh, PCAB USB. So. I'm going to go ahead, it's going to uh, call it that in the future, and uh, the profile location, it's given right here in the directory on my system. So I'm going to say OK. OK. And so it's got PCAB USB has now been created there. So let's go ahead and we'll open that by clicking on OK. So now JMRI is going to start up. I'm going to click on Next, and it's my language English. You can change that, just click what you want. Um, the default owner, Larry Puckett, me. Let's move on. Now, the system manufacturer for your DCC system. Now, we know that's NCE. So we're going to go down here to NCE and click on it. System connection. Uh, we're using the NCE USB interface, so let's click on that. OK, now, what serial port? Well, we know it was COM11, right? We just looked at that in the drivers. So we're going to click on that. I know that I've got USB 7.xx. Uh, there's another one, 6.xx, but that's not the one. So we'll pick, you know, we'll go with version 7. Uh, the system, it's a power cab, but they've got other options here. And finally, we're going to go additional settings. So when I showed you in video in the first video, we selected a value of 19,200 baud for the communications. So let's click on that. And then we can move on to the next window and finish. OK, so what comes up is this window here. Well, that doesn't have my roster. Where is that? OK, let's go here to Preferences. OK, and wait for that to open up. And I'll pull that one down in here where we can read it and get it set up properly so I can see it. Okay. Okay, now it's all in there. So we've got it uh, set up here. Uh, NCE for the NCE USB, COM port is set up. Everything we need right there is set up. File locations. Okay, this is important. 
what we want to do is we're going to change the default file location. Uh, we need to move up a little bit and we go to the roster okay, and click open. And we're going to say save down here. Okay. Well, let's, let's change one other thing while we're here. Let's go to display because it's not going to be a very good display. Let's go with a size uh, 16 font. Okay. So now we're going to click on save and restart the, uh, the uh, okay. P, and we're going to go with the PCAB again and let it open. So now we've got the roster. It's big enough to where we can actually see it. Bring it out here. And you'll note down here at the bottom, Service Mode Programmer NCE is online. Ops Mode Programmer is online. So that tells you two things. First of all, it tells you everything's working right. You have the USB system uh, installed properly. You connected it to Decoder Pro and got the proper communications port set up. Everything is hunky-dory now. You can go ahead and start programming. And uh, it's all ready. So therefore, you, 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 you don't need to do anything anymore at this point. Uh, you might want to modify some other preferences. I'm going to go ahead. Since I created a, uh, a dummy file earlier, this test PCAB, I'm going to go ahead and select it here. And you can see it's selected because it's you know highlighted in blue. I'm going to click Delete and get rid of it. And let's delete that one. OK, see, that's how you do that. And I could actually change between these various uh, USB uh, uh, interfaces and systems by simply clicking on them. I could switch to Digitrax on Loconet and uh, you know go through that and hit Activate, and it would activate it. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll go through all this kind of stuff uh, in a future uh, uh, look at uh, extended capabilities of Decoder Pro because you know you're probably not going to do this, but if you do end it up, you do end up creating a bunch of dummy configurations during this process. This is how you get rid of them. Okay, so go ahead and uh, give that a try, and hopefully this is going to work out for you very well. Okay, I hope that uh, provides you uh, enough guidance to go ahead and proceed with installing the drivers and getting a USB interface uh, working with your uh, PowerCab system. If you run into any problems, go ahead, get in contact with, with me through the comments, and I'll try to uh, answer whatever I can. But be aware that if you have a different version of the USB interface than I have, and they've you know, they've produced several different versions over the years. And uh, if you have a different uh, a Windows version, now I'm Windows, I'm using Windows 10, you might have 7 or 8 or, you know, any of the earlier versions. They go all the way back to Windows XP in 2000. And um, so if you do have a different version, you can expect the installation processes to be slightly different. But roll with the punches, you know, they're going to be fairly similar. So you know, just try to muddle through and see what happens. Uh, it's highly unlikely that you're going to permanently break anything by, you know, installing something incorrectly. You can always go back and reinstall and uh, get another fresh start with it. So have a good week and stay safe out there. And we'll see you on Friday with another new video.